I'm Eagle Song Gardener, and we're at the at the, in the kitchen at Ravencroft Garden today. And this continues our health from the ground up approach to living. And so today we're doing the second part of our dandelion wine making video. So here we go. First of all, we're going to bring the the wine that's been fermenting in the primary fermenting vat. And you'll notice I'm actually taking it out of the oven because it was so cool in April here today, this year, that I had to put it in the bread proofing setting on the oven, which worked great for doing this. If you have a wood stove or a water heater, you can get this primary fermentation going. But I want you to see the bubbles that come up. Now we know that the primary fermentation has been really successful, our oranges, our flowers, all the citrus. So the second stage the, where we're going to today is we're gonna take all of the plant material out of the liquid. We're gonna strain it out. And then we're going to put it in the secondary fermenter, which we're using a gallon jug today. So we get these. All of the equipment that we're using was sterilized by using the boiling water method. So we just boiled water, poured it over everything, the jar and all, so that we could be reasonably sure that we were going to get what we wanted to grow in our wine and not other things. All that dandelion, Oregon grape, pulmonaria, the lungwort is in here, oranges, lemons, um, we had really successful, right at the bottom, you're gonna see, come over here where the light is, you're gonna see the cloudy um, formation, and that's the yeast, the yeast that's been growing over the last, this three days, we've been fermenting for three days in, in the oven. All right, so this is gonna be squeezed out. Get in there and, oh, I, this is a good reason not to leave your Oregon grape um, leaves in because they're really sharp, very <laughs> pokey. So, so uh, it all seemed like a good idea back when I threw them in there with everything. So I'm just going to sort that out. You know, you learn as you go. And, and so we get all the goodness out of these flowers because this is where our beautiful sour taste is coming from. That and the, and the citrus. So you learn as you go and remember, our ancestors have been making wine for eons of time, and they've done it with very simple, rudimentary practices. So we continue that method here at Ravencroft. These plant, these, you know, it's growing. It's another, I consider this gardening in the kitchen. We're growing um, the yeast, feeding it the sugar. The yeast turns the sugar to alcohol. And that is basically how wine is made. All right, we're going to, oh, the sterilizing part also in our ancestors, back to that. Boiling water is great. Sunshine is another way. You can put jars and bottles out in the sun and let the sun's sunlight help to destroy bacteria and viruses that might be on them. The other way is using antiseptic herbs like sage. Boil up a good strong sage tea and use that to wash your jars in. So there's a lot of different ways that we can come to this. And knowing that we have choices is probably one of the best parts of life. And so here we have it. All of the plant matter is now out of the wine liquid. And we started with three quarts of water. We want one gallon when we're done. So we're going to take this liquid, and it still has live yeast in it. We're gonna put it in the jug. We like the air going in, because again, yeast needs air. It's an aerobic process. And all right, 
So there we have retrieved our three quarts of water, which has now become a beautiful herb tea. And we have some sugar syrup. We have our third or fourth quart of water is um, a sugar syrup because we only put two pounds of sugar in our first batch. We've already used much of that sugar. You can taste the alcohol, you can smell the alcohol. And now what we need to do is we need to add the, um, the fourth quart of water and the last pound of sugar. So one gallon of wine, three pounds of sugar, four quarts of water. Okay. So we're putting this in. Now what we're doing is we're actually giving the yeast food so it can continue on transforming the sugar into alcohol. And the dandelion wine is now in the secondary fermentation vessel. Can you tell me how you made that simple syrup? The simple syrup was made by putting a pound, it's actually not a true simple syrup, it's a pound of sugar in a, a pint of water would be a true simple sugar. But we're following our recipe where we want three pounds of sugar, one gallon of water, and we needed one more quart. So it's one pound of sugar, which is roughly two cups of sugar. And this is organic sugar, so that's why it was a little brown, the color. Um, so we have now got the, the, the total recipe is made for the dandelion wine. All right, so the last thing that we do today as we set the secondary fermentation to work is we put in an airlock. Actually, the airlock, let me take it apart and show you. It's, it's, a, mm, it's a simple technology that allows the wine to continue to breathe. So I need to put water in this part of the vessel. There's a nice line that tells how much water is necessary. We put this back in, see the little holes here in this cap? It goes in to the... I'm having a moment. <laughs> what is this called? Air lock. This is called an air lock. I love it. Even nature asks me to slow down sometimes. So here we go. The air lock is in place. The cap goes on, and now the carbon dioxide that's made by the yeast exhaling is allowed to get out of the jug, but no air or other microbes can get into the jug. So we have a, a safe um, habitat for our wine to continue its process. So we're now in the secondary fermentation stage. I hope you're enjoying these videos and um, you can actually subscribe right below this video and enjoy more uh, time in the garden, time in the kitchen, and time in the apothecary here at Ravencroft Garden where health comes from the ground up. So visit us at our website eaglesong-gardener.com and you can find out all about classes, online possibilities, and things that we're doing there. Thanks for coming along, and we look forward to having you join us again. See you now.